close your eyes for a moment and think about the word addiction. What comes to mind? Is it the stereotypical image of someone under the influence? Or is it a more personal connection? Maybe it's the face of a friend or a family member, yourself. You may now open your eyes. Addiction in its various forms is an uninvited guest in our lives. And today I invite you to embark on a transformative journey that not only challenges your perception of addiction, but harnesses the profound power of yoga to turn the tide of this silent epidemic into a tale of awareness, resilience, and evolution. Last year, the US Department of Health and Human Services reported that 48.7 million people, 17.3% of our American population, met the criteria for a substance abuse disorder. That's about 70 people in this room. But addiction is not confined to drugs or alcohol. It extends to social media, pornography, shopping, gaming, even food. It's a devious vice that creeps into the corners of our lives, often unnoticed until it's too late. Of the 48.7 million people with a substance abuse disorder, only 6% sought treatment. Why? Nearly everyone didn't think that they needed it. And this pattern is echoed in every other type of addiction as well. Being someone in recovery from an eating disorder, and in speaking to other people in recovery, I've noticed that much of their battle with addiction was simply coming to terms with the fact that they had one. The word addiction has a history rooted in ancient Rome. It's derived from the Latin word adicere, meaning enslaved by or bound to. Today, it's become a complex, misunderstood concept burdened by stigma. Science is unraveling the intricacies of addiction, revealing that it's not a one-size-fits-all issue. It's a tapestry woven with threads of trauma, mental health struggles, and genetic predisposition. In 2015, I was broken, drowning in student debt, a broken heart, and mourning the loss of my grandmother, my Nana, who was like a second mom to me. I struggled to find a path forward. My eating disorder behaviors that I had thought I had long overcome began to engulf me once again. I was desperate not to go back to the dark places I had been before. There was a buzz around this yoga word, and I figured, why not try it out? Being a lifelong soccer player, I kind of always thought of yoga as just boring stretching, but I figured I'd try it out anyways. I forced myself to go to a class, and there I am in the final posture of class, corpse pose arms down by my side, feet extended in front of me, counting down the seconds for my least favorite part of class to be over. Slowing down and no movement was the hardest posture for me. It meant coming face to face with unwanted thoughts and emotions, something I desperately tried to avoid. But then suddenly I felt myself surrender to the teacher's words. I relaxed into the floor beneath me, and then like a waterfall, a wave of tension released from my body. Then clear as day, my Nana's voice, Bella, if you're ever having a hard time, travel, gain a little bit of perspective. It was my pain that led me to the yoga mat, and it was there on that mat that I found in my rested position refuge. That experience inspired my first trip to Bali, where I learned firsthand the power of yoga, not just the physical practice known as asana, but the spiritual practices, the yamas and niyamas known as the guiding principles, as well as meditation, and perhaps most importantly, the power of sangha, a community of practitioners. Coming back to Boston on St. Patty's Day in Southie was a culture shock. It unveiled the unhealthy environment we navigate in and in a culture that's obsessed with alcohol. At that time, my close friend Brandon was trying to get sober. Brandon was one of the kindest, most loving people I had ever met. I was always trying to get Brandon to come to yoga. I knew what it had done for me in my recovery, and I wanted to share that with him. One of my last text exchanges with Brandon is me trying to invite him to a yoga class. Three days later, Brandon was gone. The result of a car crash while under the influence. He was 25 years old. The passing of Brandon left me heartbroken, a feeling I desperately wanted to escape from. What could I have done? What could I have said to make him still be here? 
But instead of allowing regret and guilt to consume me, I got myself back to my mat. I committed to my practice every day, especially on the days that I didn't want to. The tragic loss of my friend became the catalyst for a mission. It fueled my commitment to creating a haven where sobriety and socializing could coexist. I hosted a sober memorial in honor of Brandon's life. The event was filled with everything from freshly pressed juices and chair massages to ecstatic dance. This holistic connection served to be an outlet of healing for everyone, not just people that were in recovery. It was at that moment that a vision was born, a place where anyone could come, connect, and have good sober fun, the proceeds of which would <laughs> the proceeds of which would provide scholarships and even bigger reason to show up, contribute, and get involved. From that event, we raised enough money for four people to get a year-long membership at a yoga studio. And at the end of that year, three out of four of those people maintained their sobriety. Yeah. <laughs> Two of those members went on to become yoga instructors and eventually opened up their own yoga studios. Eight years later, as we continued to expand our network, this idea of connection to our breath, to a practice of mindfulness, and to a community remains at the forefront of everything that we do. Yoga and fitness transcend the physical. They become potent instruments for emotional alchemy. This mission, my calling, isn't merely about sobriety. It's a celebration of life. It's a creation of positive spaces, of new activities, and a robust community, all of which are the antidote to addiction. With the assistance of a $200,000 grant from the city of Boston, we were able to engage with 10,000 people in 2022. We hosted, <laughs> Thank you. we hosted 188 classes and events, everything from winter cold plunges in February to beach yoga classes in Rivia. We partner with KPMG and Lululemon. Imagine the impact that we could continue to make by partnering with industry giants, sparking authentic connections, forging conversations about addiction, and amplifying the voices of recovery. Substance use disorders are among the top health problems in the US and other nations around the world. The financial cost to American society for alcohol and drug abuse in 2022 was a staggering $420 billion. That's billion with a B. According to SAMHSA, it jumped to $510.8 billion in 2023. Now let's imagine a world where this mission doesn't exist. To be honest, it doesn't take that much imagination. Most of us know someone that's lost their battle with addiction. The consequences of an action are not just statistics, though. They're stories left untold, potentially extinguished, and a world missing the energy of our loved ones. Together, let's be the architects of a world where everyone has the opportunity to overcome and emerge stronger. I wanna end this talk by asking you to close your eyes once again. And this time with your eyes closed, just simply drawing your attention to your breath. Noticing what it feels like to inhale through your nose or your mouth. And without trying to shift or change anything, just following the pathway of your breath as it makes its way down into the throat and spreads across your chest. And then following that reverse route of the breath as it makes its way up into the throat and releases through the nose or mouth. And one more conscious breath just like that, inhaling, maybe imagining a blue or a green. See if you can follow that breath down into the throat. Imagine it creating space in your chest, filling up your lungs like two perfectly engineered balloons. And then as you exhale, maybe imagining a different color, like a red or an orange, seeing if you can gather up any unwanted thoughts, stagnant energy, any stress, and then just release through the nose or mouth. Do you feel that? That's the power of transformation at our fingertips. Thank you for going on this journey with me. Namaste. <laughs>